first thing I want to talk about, this conference is about foreign investment. And the biggest foreign investor, Michael Calvi, an American, is under house arrest. He actually might make an appearance uh, this weekend at the forum. But what kind of environment, what kind of message does it send to someone thinking about doing business in Russia? Well, of course, it's a forum not only for, of course, foreign, but also for domestic investors. And uh, a lot of uh, many foreign investors came from all around the world. Uh, I've met Chinese uh, investors from Arab countries, as well as from, from Europe and the United States. But uh, Mr. Calvi, I don't know... He's very well known. Yes, I don't know him investor. personally very much, but he's very much respected uh, in Russia, and his company also respected. It doesn't mean that probably he's company or somebody in his office uh, could not uh, break the, 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 the uh, legislation here and there. But uh, I very much hope that uh, uh, the issue will be resolved and Mr. Kali will be back to, to, to office. Soon. Do you think the criminal charges are manufactured against him? I don't think so. You know, business is such a, a tricky thing that... Uh, you know, you can you can uh, sometimes unwillingly, you know, b break some rules, and uh, in this case, uh, it probably was done. But I, I don't think that Mr. Calvi necessarily uh, should uh, be punished for this. You know, uh, but uh, I should it should be cleared uh, soon. We very much hope that he he would because he really has a very good reputation in Russia. I want to ask you about sanctions. Washington is thinking about even putting on new sanctions on Russia due to election meddling. They're also maybe doing something with the dollar, barring dollar transactions for Russian banks. How are you preparing for this and are you worried? You know, I don't see even any pretext for this because, well, previously I don't think there was any ground for it, but it was some pretext. Now, I don't see them any. You know, the Miller report, just uh, investigation, just finished without mm -hmm. without any. That was my next question. Without anything, you but know. Do you think? Do you think that then the Mueller report behind President Trump? Do you think that's a window for him? He campaigned on better relations with Russia, and actually they've gotten worse. But he can do nothing from this case, you know, he, his, his hands tied up uh, by, uh, by Congress, and uh, I think he, he probably would like, we don't know, of course, what is in his mind, but even he, if, he, if he wishes to do so, I don't think he'll be able to do You know, I always remember the speech of one of the very senior Democratic uh, representatives uh, in, in, in uh, it was meeting in, before the group of businessmen, he said, we will impeach Mr. Trump. It was just nine months after he was elected. We'll impeach him, either for Russia, or for money laundering, or for insanity. I recommend it to start from insanity rather from Russia, but they started from Russia. So we think it has not very much to do with Russia. I think it's domestic, it's domestic problem. But the fresh sanctions would be because of election meddling, which has happened. I think security. Russia was already punished for this, you know, and there was already sanctions under this pretext. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I don't see what, what new could be added to this list, you know. President Xi is here, a thousand strong for his delegation. Um, have you been meeting with Chinese business people? Yes, we do. We, we I have a lot of meetings. I mean, two or three meetings with the uh, with a big uh, Chinese company discussing the investment in Russia in infrastructure, particularly because, you know, you know, uh, recently uh, Russian government adopted the uh, new program of so-called national project and infrastructure on the very top on the agenda. We ourselves very much involved in infrastructure. We build the airport in Saint Petersburg, uh, uh, pay uh, toll roads. Here, so we continue to do it, and Chinese companies very much interested in constructing and investing. So that's one of the areas of particular interest for them. Outside of your Chinese business, I want to ask you internationally. You're exiting your Angola unit. Why are you leaving Africa, and how much are you going to get for that? We unit? we did not uh, take any final decisions. I actually uh, stopped this decision because uh, uh, I don't think that we necessarily should leave. You know, it, it's so you're going to stay no, in Angola. No, you know, we we would like to work with Africa, and we do. But for this, we not necessarily should have a bank. We, we, we have our investment, um, investment banking, and we can do transactions from Russia, from London, from Frankfurt. For this, we, we don't, because the local bank is normally working on the ground uh, with the population, with the SMEs, uh, and that's, uh, that's uh, for so us. So as of now, you're staying put? Uh, we, we haven't made our decision. We might, we, we might leave, we might not. We have just a small unit, you know. It's a, it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, $15 million, you know, capital. So it, it, it doesn't very much matter. Anything else international? you're looking about shedding, exiting? 
We understand that probably, particularly because of the geopolitical situation, we more and more focus on Russia, and 95% of our income come from our business in Russia. But we would like to keep the international presence. We, we, because of the Brexit, we reduced our team in London, but we increased our team in Frankfurt. We keep our offices in Shanghai, in China, in Vietnam, uh, in other parts of the world, in, in uh, many countries, even with Georgia, for example. We, we opened our bank uh, in, uh, in 2004, I think, and it went through all these events in Georgia quite successfully. So you, we'll continue to... You have. mentioned Brexit, and I know you have um, you had a, have some job cuts there in London. Are you expecting to maybe even shrink London even more? We still don't have... I don't think so because you know our bank is mainly focusing not uh, to work in London uh, or in 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 the UK. It's mainly to work with uh, Africa, Asia, India, for example, quite active. So I think we will still have this part of business uh, conducted from London, and I don't see why reason we should cut. But we shall see what kind of Brexit we'll have. It's also quite important. Yeah. What, what do you think? What do you think of that? Who do you think should? Well, be the I think minister? it's a difficult situation. I think that I I don't know. I, I don't know the answer. I don't know what to do. With the Irish border, I, I don't know. Uh, it looks like uh, probably Brexit without any agreement looks more and more possible. Um, the IMF recently said that the TB is close to restructuring Mozambique's debt. Um, when will you finish that? We don't know. I mean, uh, we we are in touch with um, uh, with the government. We're in touch with the advisors. I think Lazard Frere. Uh, bank, and I think we, we moved uh, quite substantially on finding the agreement. And uh, we are lucky that we came from any investigations completely clean. You know, there's no any accusation of any wrongdoings on the part of VTB. And I think we might expect soon a visit of quite high level officials from Mozambique, including the Minister of Finance, Minister of Economy, to, to conclude uh, these discussions. Um, the $535 million loan. When, how, how much of that do you hope to recover? Well, I think, I, I, I don't know about the details, but I think we will restructure uh, rather than write all the debt. When do you think that will be? When? When? Well, I think, I think uh, during this year, or maybe by autumn, we, we will find the solution.